Hey everyone, my name is David Poland, and I'm the instructor for the music uh, program in the summer for the Latino Civic Alliance. And um, we're going to be learning about all about the ukulele and playing the uke. All right. And I think there's about 10 sessions. And the first session was supposed to be today, Monday, um, June the 28th. But it's pretty hot outside. <laughs> And so uh, the session was canceled. I think sessions canceled this week, but I want to get something recorded so that all of you, all of you guys can open up your ukuleles and check out the contents and the, and see what they're all about and start playing and be ready for the first time that we have our, our kind of in-person session. All right. So this is being recorded to zoom and hopefully that will work just fine. And, uh, our the, the awesome folks at, at LCA will be able to get uh, a link to the video to everybody. Okay, so once again, I'm David, and I'm a music teacher, um, musician, I run a band. Um, I'm based in Woodenville, Washington. And my understanding is that students who are coming into this, this, uh, this summer program come from Mount Vernon, Moses Lake, Burien, sort of long, lots of folks all over the place. If you're Moses Lake, I guess the temperatures today is supposed to be like 117. And it might hit 115 in Seattle today. Yeah. So um, so it's warm. It's warm in my place. So hopefully I won't, don't look like I'm sweating too much. All right. Okay. So I think the first thing that we get started with is let's take a look at some ukuleles. All right. So there are, I guess the first thing to do is that I think lots of folks are getting a box that has a ukulele in it. And your box won't look exactly like this one. This is a, this is one that I get for a lot of my camp and classroom students, um, but it'll be something similar, okay? And it um, you'll have a box and you'll open it up and you look inside, there'll be a ukulele, all right? In fact, if you're super lucky, you might there'll probably be some bags, some packaging material. You'll probably find a, a little manual, and you could self. All right. Oh, it probably won't be in tune either. We'll get to that. All right. So I'm also I noticed that the ones that you guys are getting um, has uh, some real sort of interesting goodies. So I'm going to open up another one that look kind of looks like this. And here we go. This was uh, my first youth. It's made by a company called Akbot. And when I got it, it came out, it was in the bag like this. All right. And so we open it up, zip open the bag. And there's the youth. All right. Looks similar to the other one, right? Just a little bit different color. They all come in all kinds of different colors and shapes, all right? There's, there's actually four different sizes of youth. We'll get into that. But anyhow, you might have a strap. So the strap gets put on. You'll probably have some clips at the back and just underneath the neck. All right, you put it in, you put it, put it on. That sounds really good. And we'll get into the, all the different parts. But you may also find some other toys, some other cool stuff in the, in the bag. And let's just kind of take a look at what you might, might have found. Right? Um, you might find something, you might find a tuner and it'll turn on. It's a little electronic device. In order for this to, to turn on, you might have to pull a little tab or something to um, to us to that's put in to protect the battery. All right. So just follow the instructions, but you may have to pull tab to activate it. All right. Um, but you'll need this. This is a tuner. All right. Tuner. We'll, and we'll show you how to use that in a sec. Some other stuff you'll eventually you'll find. I bet you'll find an extra pair of strings, an extra set of strings. Okay. And I think in the ukuleles, you guys are getting. There'll be a set of four Aquila strings. Aquila, A-Q-U-I-L-A. Those are actually, they're really good strings, right? So even though your ukulele comes with four strings on the instrument, um, strings don't last forever, right? It is possible to break a string or after a year or so, year or so, you may want to change the strings because they do wear out, okay? Anyway, so you'll probably have an extra set. Good to have it, good to have in the case or I keep with your uke. You may have a cloth to clean it. I'm, bit, I'm not a clean freak. I don't think I've ever used mine, 
but there it is. If you have a shiny ukulele, use the cloth, use the, the clean cloth to keep it super shiny, get all the footprint, the footprints, the handprint, fingerprints off it. There might be some cards, might be a little manual in it, all right? So a lot of will have little booklets that have you sort of the first chords and everything. We'll cover all this stuff in our, in our lessons. But if you've got a little how to play the ukulele booklet that came with your, with your uke, yeah, check it out. All right. These are always, sometimes these are really well, well done. Um, and then the last would be, you probably have some picks. You probably have some picks that come with it. Like for example, here's a pick, right? It's a pink, pink pick. Or you might have some that are made, like this one's made of like felt or say, and then this one is made of hard plastic, all right? We will mostly play our ukulele with our fingers, with our hands, all right? Um, however, I will, since, since uh, all your ukes will probably come with picks, we will talk a little to use a, a pick to, to play the uke, all right? So that's, that's the, the contents of the instrument. So um, there are four different kinds. If you looked at the box of yours, I believe that you guys all received a uke that is of what's called a concert size, a concert size. So concert size is one of the four, one of four different kinds of shapes of uke. The smallest of the ukes is called the soprano uke, little, little uke. And just because it has small size, doesn't mean that it has to have a small sound, all right? So don't look down on uke because it has a small size. Sometimes a small uke is exactly the right sound for the song that you want to sing or play, all right? Sometimes it's the right thing. And sometimes if you, if you have smaller hands, well, use a smaller instrument because it's easier to, easier to make the, get your fingers in all the right places. But this is one, this is one size, right? The, the soprano ukulele. So I'm gonna set this down so it doesn't get squashed. Okay, the next size, the first one I opened up, this is a little bit bigger. This is called a concert. And this is the kind that you guys got, all right? A concert size ukulele. And really the difference is that in each size up, the size of the body of the uke gets a little bit bigger and the length of the neck gets a little bit bigger. So the scale length, we call it the scale length, the, from this point to this point, becomes longer, there are more frets. We'll talk about all the parts in a second. But um, if you have bigger hands, if you're, if you're, you know, like you got just big hands, sometimes a larger instrument could be, could be helpful, right? But it's tuned exactly the same way. So this is a concert ukulele. Um, the other uke that I had here with the strap, my Aklot. This is also a concert size, right? I like this, I like this one. Okay, what, are, what else have we got? Um, okay, oh, here's another one. I'm surrounded by ukuleles. So one of the things that becoming a new ukulele player that over their lives, ukulele players tend to accumulate a lot of ukuleles, all right? This instrument here is a little bit bigger. This is called a tenor uke. And so it, you know, going from soprano to a concert uke, just a little bit bigger size, all right? I got this one from, um, a, they're made um, in Bend, Oregon, by a company called Soundsmith. And I like this one a lot. I like it a lot. Um, it's not, it wasn't terribly expensive. And it came with a really cool padded bag too, which I kind of like. So I can take it on an airplane and not worry about breaking it. Okay, and then the next size up is a baritone. And so this is my main, this is my main uke. I love this one. Um, and a baritone, baritone almost looks like a, a really small guitar. Okay, in size, but it has a little bit bigger sound. All right. Um, and this, this instrument here, I, I really like it. It's um, proof that you don't have to spend a lot of cash to get a fun instrument. I got this at a thrift store. This is my this is an eight dollar thrift store ukulele, and I am so psyched that it came into my life. 
Um, I just love it. I use it all the time. Um, okay, but it is, you know, some other, okay. So, so there we are. So now we've seen four different sizes of use. And maybe we should talk a little bit about, well, what are all the parts? Okay. So um, some of you may already know this. Maybe some of you have already played the ukulele a little bit, or you've played a guitar before, or you've played maybe some other stringed instrument at school. All right. Um, but let's take a look at the basic parts. The big curved part here. All right. All the big, the, the big box. All right. And yes, this instrument, the concert size, that's still a pretty big box, the big curved wooden box. That's called the body of the ukulele. Okay, it's called the body. This area up here, okay, this is called the head of the ukulele. And of course, you connect the head to the body with a neck. Okay, there's a neck. There's a neck right there. Okay. The on um, at the end here, this is called the bridge. The bridge. And the bridge has, you, you'll probably see a, like a white piece of plastic sitting on top of the bridge. And the strings sit on top of it. That's called the saddle. That saddle. At the other end, towards the, to the, towards the head, you probably be another bit white piece of plastic that the strings are sitting on. See, you can see underneath the, the strings. That's called the nut. And these turnable machines that are connected to the strings are called tuning machines. Okay. And as you turn the knob clockwise or counterclockwise, depending on the direction that the that the string has been wound onto this little post, it will make the string tighter or looser. And if you turn this, if you turn it so the string becomes tighter, the pitch or sound goes up higher. And if you loosen the string, the string will go down in in pitch. Okay. Um, and for most of the ukuleles, the strings are tied to the end of the end of the bridge. All right. So if you ever break a string, really you just disc you just untie the, all the broken string parts, and then you take the string and you tie it down through the loop here. You put two two half hitch knots, kind of like the first hitch you use, the first knot you might tie to tie your shoes. You do two of those, basically two of those down here, and you pull it tight and then run it up to the tuning machine and wind it at least four times around the tuning machine. I, I like doing it more, I think I've got like five or six turns. Um, the um, strings, when they're first tuned, and we haven't talked about tuning yet, but they will, your uke, when it comes out of the box, will have very, should have pretty slack strings that are out of tune. And the maker, the builder of the of your uke, does that because if they're coming from overseas and they're coming on a container ship or whatever, they're you know in travel, taking the pressure, the tension off the strings is good for the body of the, of the instrument. Okay, but when once you tune it for the first time, do not get stressed, don't get upset if you find that you have to tune the instrument often, for the first week or so. Um, your uke will probably need to be tuned a lot. And it's because the strings stretch. Maybe we wouldn't think about it. Even on acoustic guitar, my like my my steel string acoustic, um, even metal strings, they stretch um, for a week after you after you put new strings on. And so you want to you just be patient with it. Tune it every day. Okay. And then it'll settle down and it should stay in pretty good tune. All right. Um, okay. So, oh, okay, so the next thing, so we've got the neck. And on the other side of the neck, we call this area that's, look, it's a different color. This is like brown, you know, sort of mahogany wood. And then on this side, it's painted, all right? And this side that's painted is called the fretboard, okay? So I'm running my hands down the fretboard. And there are metal wires crossing the fretboard at regular spaces, all right? And each of those metal wires, that's called a fret, okay? Fret board, fret, F-R-E-T, F-R-E-T is fret. The first fret is this one right here, okay? Not right here, okay, this is the nut. This is the first fret. This is the second fret, third, fourth, fifth. Here's the seventh, here's the 10th, here's the 12th fret, all right? 13, 14, 15. So this means this ukulele, this baritone ukulele 
has 15 frets. And if there have been more, some ukuleles will have 18 or more. Okay. Um, just most ukulele players won't really be playing up here too much. So there's not much need for more frets up here. All right. Okay. Um, let's see. Oh, so the strings, there's four strings. strings four strings on this ukulele so um we numbers so the first fret, no let's let's talk about that after we hold the instrument yeah i think we'll do that i'm going to make an assumption not a great assumption but i'm going to make an assumption that most of you are right-handed okay and if you're not right-handed this bear with me we're going to hold, find, how do we hold the instrument first before, before we talk more about the strings? So if you're right-handed, we're going to take our right hand, okay? And we're going to reach around the top of the instrument and put our hand right underneath this curved part down here, okay? So we're hold it, you're going to hold it. And I might turn my zoom here just a little bit so you can see, okay? So I'm holding the instrument, I'm holding it steady. And my forearm, I've got across the instrument, and I'm kind of holding it and securing it so that it won't fall down. You don't want to hold it so that you're crushing yourself or crushing the instrument, but you want to hold it so you don't feel like you're going to drop it, okay? And if you were to look down, this hole here, which we didn't talk about, this is called the sound hole, okay? And it's called the sound hole, even though no sound really comes out of it. You might think when the instrument, when you play the string, when you make strings vibrate, that all the sound is coming out of this hole. It isn't. The whole instrument makes sound, okay? Um, but this is called the sound hole. So if you're holding it, the instrument like this, then if you were to look down, then straight below your nose should be in line with the sound hole. So not like this, not like this, not like this, sort of like easy. And the neck should be going up so that it's kind of in line with your, with your shoulder. And your right thumb, if you were to brush across the strings right here, should be just below the fretboard. Yeah, okay, there we go. And with their left hand, I'm just sort of make holding it gently like this, okay? So, okay, so now we're holding it like this. And so right now, my thumb is pressing on the first string. The first string is the string farthest away from my chin. Does that make sense? No, it doesn't make any sense at all, um, but it's true. The first string is the farthest one from my chin. Second string, third string, then the fourth string is the one closest to my chin. Right here, there it is. So we can make our, so um, we give those strings numbers. We'll talk about numbers, okay? We talked about fret numbers. Here's the first fret, here's the second fret, here's the third fret. And um, we haven't talked about fingers yet, but there's more to come. So the, fit, the strings have numbers. They also have names. We give them letter names. So the first string, that's also an A. And don't sweat it. Don't sweat the sort of the A, you know, the, the, the names of the strings. Over time, you'll, you'll, just, you'll just like totally know it, okay? But let, I'll just introduce you to the names of it. So A string is the first. E, the E string is the second string. Then the C string is the third string, and G is the fourth string. The string closest to my chin, the fourth string, we call that G. So what we've just done here is we've played four strings open. We've just like pressed on the string with our thumb and made it vibrate just by pressing down on the string. And what we're doing here, without pressing on the fretboard, we're playing the strings open. So here's an open A. The second string, here's an open E. The third string, here's an open C. And the fourth string, here's an open G. Okay? And those, what we've done, we've, we've just played four notes or four tones. Okay, four tones or four notes. We've played the note called A. We just played the note called E the note called C and the note called G, okay? And now, what if we were to play two or more of those notes all at the same time? 
What if we brushed our thumb across the strings to kind of make a note sandwich? We're making a, a four note layer cake here of sound. Okay. And what we've got here is we're, when we do, when we play two or more notes or tones at the same time, okay, at the same time, then we're playing what's called a chord. Okay, it's a chord. And our, this is our first chord. We're just going to do all open strings. If you want to support the neck with your left hand, just make a V with your left hand. And we're just going to brush our hands across. And there's a name to this chord. We call it the My Dog Has Fleas chord. Yeah. The tones or notes, G, C, E, A, is from a very old song. And with the words, my dog has fleas. It's true. You can Google it. All right. And so, in fact, the, the word ukulele, ukulele, actually, is Hawaiian for jumping fleas. And it, um, we'll get into more of the history of the ukulele, but sir, I think that early players of the uke, when people heard it, made them think of fleas jumping. I don't think I've ever seen a flea jumping. I don't think our cat has ever had fleas. But if our cat ever had fleas, then I think I'd understand fleas better. But my dog has fleas. There it is, right? And so if your uke is singing the My Dog Has Fleas song, which can also be called an A minor seventh chord, or a C sixth chord. There's a couple ways to call this chord, but it's easy for now. Let's just call it the My Dog Has Fleas chord. All right, that's easier for everybody because we'll be spending lots of time there. Okay. So when you're brushing down with your thumb, we've just done our first strum. So making sound with the uke, with our our right hand is involved in making the strings vibrate, and we do that by strumming the instrument. And so we've just done our first thumb strum, okay? And what I want you to think about when you're using your thumb to strum the instrument, not to strum the, the, the strings, is you don't want to be crashing through the strings. You don't want to be crashing through. Um, there might be a time where you want to play strongly, but in, the, in generally, you want to brush easily and gently across all the strings. Now, um, one way to think about it is think about your thumb as a boat that's going over waves on a lake or on the ocean. And think of the strings like being the waves on the ocean. And what you really want to do, you want your, your boat to ride smoothly over the waves, all right? You don't want to go crashing through the waves because that means the water's going to come over the front of the boat and get you all soaked today like today would not be bad um but we want to brush smoothly across all right you can brush gently right make a quiet sound or you can you can you can press pretty hard on the strings while still brushing smoothly but what you don't want to do is you don't want to sort of get your thumb stuck in between the strings you want to brush over the strings okay so that's this there we are okay so okay now what about tuning so i guess we better get the the tuning device going all right so i'm pretty sure all of you have a device that it may not look exactly like this it may not look exactly like this and um of course i get a notification whenever i get a notification on my phone it's going to come up on my ipad screen so i'm just going to do that and hopefully no more interruptions. Um, but while we have that interrupt, before we get into tuning, I should mention that if you're what you're so you're watching this this video on Zoom, and soon you'll be connecting to us to listen to Zoom, right? Um, or our next session. And what you should do, and I guess we'll send an email out beforehand. But Zoom has a setting in it that's 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 called enable original sound okay and you enable original sound and on if you're on a laptop doing this it should be kind of like a green button that you'll see here that you'll be able to click to turn on original sound if you're using a phone or an ipad like i'm using an ipad right now you'll see three dots for example in the top right corner click that 
and you may see a setting there that says use original sound. And what that does, um, that's good for practicing, you playing music on Zoom. Because otherwise, if you don't do that, Zoom will tend to think that the sound of your, of your ukulele is like background noise, like noise from a road or the sound of your cat or something. Okay. And sometimes if we want, if we want people to be able to play and hear people, um, um, it may be hard. So just make sure you try to enable the original sound. And um, for most people, we may have a lot of people connecting into the Zoom session. And so everyone will be muted. I think everyone's going to be muted initially, okay? And so, but like the Zoom has cool features for raise your hand if you have questions. And my objective is not to just just talk constantly for an hour and a half because um, that'd be really tiring for everybody. But I'm going to ask people to like ask questions, all right? In the real sessions, we will do some time and we'll have a break and then we'll finish, all right? Um, What's worked really well for me in the past is to do less kind of lessons up front, then take a quick break, and then do more song playing at the end and work on work on sort of taking what we just learned in terms of the instrument and then applying it in the second half. Well, we'll also do some stuff like crossword puzzles and drawing projects. Like we'll share we'll share some cool stuff in like so it's we'll try and make it as multimedia as, as Zoom can be. Okay. All right, so back to tuning. So the tuning device is kind of a cool thing. It probably, if your device will probably have alligator like jaws, jaws, okay? So you clip on here, make the jaws go like this, and there's the top of it. And what you do with the alligator clip is you get the, the head of the ukulele, all right? And you're gonna clip the jaws so that they're clipped onto the, onto the head of the uke. That's all you have to do. There's a sensor, there's a sensor inside the tuner that when you make the string vibrate, and you can feel when you make a string vibrate, you can feel the, the ukulele vibrate. It's making, it's vibrating at how many hertz is that, that sound, like A440, for example. Um, and, the, and the tuner will listen for that and say, oh, I think they're trying to play G, but they're not quite at G. So then turn your, 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 um, your tuner on. Of course, this one is going to be. Where's my? Okay. There's my battery. I'm gonna put this back in. All right. Good. So I had to reseat my battery a little bit. Pushing the clip. All right, that should work. Ah, so it's come on. It's turned on. So now clip it on. And here we go. So now let's start. Let's start with it's turned on. You want to have it facing you. All right, so you can see the screen. So you can see the screen of the device. And play your play the let's let's go and play the fourth string the G string. Ah, okay. And on your on your ukulele, it should come up with the letter G or something close, and it may change color. Like mine, if it's if if the tuner thinks that my G is pretty close, it will turn green. Okay, and it may turn red if it thinks it's it's off. Right. You can get what you want to do then is if you're not getting a green or you know you're not getting a green green light, you can turn the tuner for the string that is attached to your fourth string. Find just follow it along. Here's the fourth string, and here's the tuning machine that it's connected to. And you can turn that either clockwise or counterclockwise. Initially, it doesn't matter. You you can't really make a mistake. Okay. If you turn it the wrong way you won't, you'll go farther away from being in tune, all right? Or, you know, so you try it and turn it in the direction that, here it is. So I started off with the, with the string being a little bit low, a little bit lower than G. And so I turned it and now I, I'm pretty close, all right? 
So now the next string, do the C string, and it's pretty close. I'm a little bit low, so I'm gonna I'm gonna just tighten my string just a little bit. Yeah, that's pretty good. All right, next string E. Ah, this one says I'm a little bit high, so I'm gonna I'm gonna loosen the string just a bit. I loosened it too much. Now I'm coming back, and I get a pretty consistent E. That sounds pretty good. And then A, oh my A, it looks really good. So um, G, C, E, A. And we'll, in our first session, we'll spend lots of time, but your man, your your uke will have a little manual in it and it will probably talk a lot about your tuner. And that's a good thing to practice before our first session. Do your best to get your uke into, into proper tune, okay? You will notice you'll notice that if I'm playing my my dog has fleas chord, so my dog has fleas, that the fourth string, that G, is higher than the C that comes next. It's kind of strange. So a high note, a low note, a, high, a little bit higher note, and a higher note, so the, the strings are not in order like a, like a six string guitar like this one here. Um, where the, your, the, the bigger strings are, are lower in sound, and as you go from six to five to one, they get higher and higher and higher. The, the strings on the ukulele are mixed, so don't, don't be confused by that. That's by design. That's how, that's how the instrument works. And then your tuner, probably your tuner is probably going to work that if you just pull it back, it should turn off. All right. And so if you want to use again, you lift it up and it should turn back on, which is a, a cool thing. It's a really cool thing for preserving battery life. Okay. The tuner probably uses one of those little CR2032 like watch batteries or like, okay. So a little, a little sort of like um, disc, a little silver disc battery, um, NICAD batteries. Okay. I think they're NICADs. Okay. So here we go. So now, so there's 235. So we're 35 minutes in. And what have we done? We've learned how to hold on to our uke. We've learned how to hold it on. Oh, and if your ukulele comes with a strap, the strap is super useful. All right. But please, please, please do not trust your ukulele to the strap. So if you put it on, it's really helpful. Like, in fact, I'll put it on right now. The strap is really helpful for just making it kind of easy to hold on to the instrument. Let's put it on. Put it on. And you should adjust it so that it fits you really well. So it goes over your shoulder like this. But what you don't want to be doing is walk around the house with your uke attached to just the strap and you're not putting your hands on it. Because it's real easy for the strap to come off, come off the, um, the pins. And you, well, yeah. There's almost no sadness for a musician like experiencing an instrument coming off the straps. Yeah, so don't be that person. <laughs> um, the straps are useful because they can sort of like take a little bit of pressure off your shoulders from holding. But really, the way we play the uke is get used to holding it this way. Um, but you know what? Depending on how you're sitting watching the the session, if you were to if you were to use your leg. To sort of hold, hold, support the ukulele, sort of find a comfortable place to hold onto it. I'm not going to give you any grief there, but this is the, this is kind of like the, this is the classical way of, of holding the instrument. And so before you hold it other ways, you should practice this way to, so that you understand it and can do it. And then after that, if you want to, if you want to be a bit slack and just sort of put it on your leg, I can totally get that. All right, so be comfortable. Be comfortable while you're working here. Okay. All right. So next, well, well, well. So we should um, let's see what are the materials we got. So for songs that we'll be playing, I want to talk about a few things. So I think everyone who's since we're using Zoom, I will be sharing information over Zoom, like song sheets and that sort of thing. But I would recommend a lot of the songs that we'll be playing will come from places like ukesociety.com, all right? 
So if you were to visit UK Society, U-K-E, Society, S-O-C-I-E-T-Y dot com, um, you'll find that that's, a, that's a, a group that's focused on helping people learn to play the uke, all right? And there's lots of, of songs available for public for public use. And I will use some of the Uke Society songs. I arrange a lot of songs that get contributed to Uke Society. So we'll do a lot of the ones that I've arranged, all right? Um, and so lots of really easy and, and really easy to, to play standard music that's up on ukesociety.com. Um, your package didn't include, but I, I would not be surprised if your package included a little book that had a basic chord chart in the back okay it probably had a basic chord chart it probably has some basic songs some really first songs um something about your know, your chords and talking about your strumming patterns and look here here's a picture of the tuner oh and all the first uh, the first ukuleles right so the size of the uke so check out your check out your your package and and read this this could be some of the some of the some of the builders of ukes have really amazing, amazing booklets. And some of them were kind of lame, but you know what? Check out the one you've got. And I'm presuming that it's gonna be pretty, pretty, pretty good, all right? So for our first session, make, come, come to our first session with your You Can Tune and have a walk through some of this. If, if everyone has a chance to at least look at this and then that would be really helpful. After we're done with our sessions, you can also get books. There are books out there to help you learn, all right? And this is one published by the Hell Leonard Company, and it's called the Hell Leonard Ukulele Method. And my first students will use my first students will use a lot of these, but um, we'll play a lot of other other music. So why don't we get started? So the first thing I'm going to put up is a chord chart. So in your booklet that came with your uke, you probably saw a chord chart. But I'm gonna I'm gonna bring one up on my screen, and hopefully it'll look okay on Zoom. And so I'm gonna share. Oh, you know what? This isn't going to fly because I'm using the Latino Civic Alliances login. And so my so my library of music is going to be an issue here. So so what we're going to do instead, so what we're going to do instead is we're going to grab a we're going to get a, a package out of uh, my sound my sound Smith ukulele. We're going to grab their chord chart. Okay. All right. So here we go. Chord chart. Okay. And so like you say, you've probably got something like this in your book. So the first chord we're going to look at is the C chord. So here's a little chart. Here's a little diagram for what we call the C chord. Every chord that we'll play on the ukulele will be given a name. All right, just like we gave the strings names, we gave the strings the names G, C, E, A. All right, and those are just notes. Maybe some of you have learned to sing a little bit, and maybe you've heard the song Do, Re, Mi, Fa, So, La, Ti, Do. And so those are the tones in a music, musical scale. And on the piano, a musical scale will use the notes A, B, C, D, E, F, G. All right, so there's like seven, seven notes there. And then you start all over again when you get to the next higher, next higher A, for example. And so we give the individual notes names. And as we combine, as we group those notes into like a note sandwich to make a chord, then we give the, those chords names too, all right? So, the first chord that we have is the one that we learned when we first picked up the instrument. That was the My Dog Has Fleas chord, the A minor seventh chord. There we go, okay? So then next, we're going to do what we call the C chord. So the C chord is not a, not a, hard, not a hard chord. So let's take a look at, at the, the chord chart. This is, this, is, this is the one right here, and notice that the chord chart one has a name, there's C, okay? And there are four vertical lines, four lines going up and down, okay? Each of those lines corresponds 
to one of the strings of your ukulele. Okay, so over here, okay, so here's the first string. So the one, this one, there's the first, second, third, and fourth string. So the string furthest to the, to the left here, that's the first string, second, third, and fourth, okay? And you'll see some dots, like a, a, like a, a dark circle, all right? So in this case, that dark circle is pressing down on the third fret of the, of the first string. So we talked about here's the first fret, here's the second fret, here's the third fret. And when we, when we say press down on the third fret, we don't mean to press down on the wire, okay? We actually mean to press down in the space between the wires. So here, this space right here, this is the air for when we're pressing down, making notes, we call this really the first fret, okay? Second fret, third fret, okay? So now, which finger do we use? Well, shoot, we talked a lot, a lot about using our thumb, okay, to, to make sounds, but what about our left hand? This is the hand that we're gonna be using to press down on the frets. Well, we give, we give, our, we give our fingers names. We give our fingers numbers, okay? The thumb doesn't have a number. It's just your thumb. This is the first finger. Here's the second finger. Ring finger is my third finger. And my pinky is my fourth finger. First, index, middle, annular. I guess uh, from Pratt Costco guitar, annular is my, is my third finger. And pinky, this is my, the small finger is, is my fourth. In general, notes that are played on the first fret Use your first finger to play those. Notes that are on the second fret, use your second finger to play those notes. Notes that are on the third fret, use the third finger to play those. And you probably know where I'm going with this, right? Notes that are on the fourth fret, use your fourth finger to play those. Okay? All right. So to play the C chord, we're going to press down our third finger at the third fret of the first string. Okay? What happens to our thumb? Your thumb should be, this part of your thumb should be riding down the center of the back of the neck. Visualize, look at, look at the back of the neck and, and imagine that there's a line going right down the center of the back of the neck, okay? And you should try to keep this part of your thumb on that line as you move up and down. That's where, this is where you want to keep your thumb, okay? So you don't want to see your thumb peeking up above the neck, okay? If it happens by mistake, put it back, right? If it comes up while you're playing, you realize, oh, thumb stick up, put it back, all right? Try to keep it right here. There, and we'll get into the reason for it in a second, all right? So where your thumb is, is here, all right? And now let's take our third finger and press down at the third fret of the first string. Let's hold our uke the way we've been taught, all right? Like this, all right? Or if you're already slacking at home, you've got, you're sitting back and you've got you like this, maybe you'll do that too, all right? But watch, it's good for, good for your back to like sit up straight and have your uke like this, right? It's good for your posture. All right. And I'm gonna brush down with my, with my thumb, fourth string, third string, second string, first string. And there is the G chord. If your ukulele is in tune, you should be hearing something like that. The C major chord, it's a pretty bright, happy sounding chord, okay? If you are hearing something like this, oh, if you are, like, if you're playing the, if you're hearing, you're trying to play the first string with your thumb, and you're hearing thud, 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 oh, okay, so let's think about that, all right? There are some things like thuds and buzzes that can happen with your, with your ukulele. And why does that happen? It might be that you're not pressing hard enough. All right. So let's do a little game. Let's do a little game. Let's take your third finger and we're just going to touch, we're just going to touch the string, not press on it. Just take your, the tip of your third finger. We're just going to touch the, the first string at the third fret. Okay. You're hardly touching it at all. And now press down with your thumb. You should get that thud, thud, thud sound, just a muffled sound. Now start pressing down a little bit. Start pressing a little bit more, just press a little bit more. Eventually you hear a buzzing sound. 
like a bee, like there's a bee inside your, your ukulele. And then suddenly, if you press down hard enough, you should get a nice clean, clear sound, all right? So if you get a thud or buzz, it's probably that you're not pressing down hard enough with your, with your finger. But here's, a, here's something, it's possible to press too hard, okay? So you only want to press hard enough to make that clear sound. If you press harder than that, like you put a crushing press down, ow, then all you're doing is making your string go out of tune. And you're also putting like a deep ridge in the tip of your, of your finger. That's just going to hurt. By the way, I hope everyone has something to drink. Water, ice water. On a day like today, especially, this is good. I don't have it. We don't have AC. And uh, so all of our windows are like, you know, like closed and we've got like the, the blinds up. But we've been able to manage the heat not too badly. But yeah, I've been drinking a lot of water. Okay, so thuds and buzzes, right? So while we're pressing down with the C major chord with our third finger, right? Let's try another chord. What if we take our second finger and press down with the second fret? Okay. Oh, there's one. All right, so that, that note, that note is a B. But let's make a chord. Let's press down all four strings, fourth string, third string, second, first. That sounds kind of cool. So let's go back to the third fret. C chord. This next chord is a C is a B is a C major seventh chord. We won't use it too often, but it's a beauty. This next chord, we're gonna use one finger and we're gonna press down at the first fret of the first string with our first finger. First finger, first fret, first string, play all four strings. That chord is called the C seventh. So let's go back. So C chord. C major seventh, C seventh. Wow, that's kind of cool. We just made three really cool sounds only using one finger. Try doing that on the guitar, the sixth string. That one right there. It won't tolerate that kind of easiness. All right, this is good stuff. There's some really beautiful chords that only take require one finger or two fingers with the ukulele, all right? So one of the beautiful things about the uke is that making some really beautiful sounds doesn't take as much work as on that thing, okay? Um, and you can learn a lot of the most common chords are just with one finger or two fingers, all right? So we've just learned the My Dog Has Fleas chord, depressing nowhere to all open strings. Then we learned C, C major seven, C seven. So there's four chords. Now let's do another one. Okay, now do, let's do the A minor chord. We're going to press down at the second, the second fret. Now we're going to press down with our second finger at the second fret of the fourth string, the string that's closest to my chin, okay? Ah, that's a cool chord. It's a sad sounding chord, isn't it? Mm, melancholy, very sad, right? So, when you press down on these notes, all right, making these chords, I do want you to try to press down with the tip of your finger, not on the pads of your fingers, but be trying to press down with your fingertip, all right, with your fingertip, so that if you look at your finger, you're going to see like the indentation on the fingertip. Ladies, if you have really, really awesome fingernails, this could be, this could be a problem, all right? So if you've, if you've got really long fingernails or whatever, um, just would have to try and manage it. So like, we'll, but what we want to try to do is press down as much with your fingertip as you can, okay? And with other chords, it may be, may, may be a thing that we'll just have to work through, okay? All right. Um, but if you have short fingernails, should be pretty, pretty good. Um, so what we got, that, that's the A minor chord, just our second finger pressing down at the second fret of the fourth string. Let's go back, C chord, third fret, third finger at the third fret of the first string, C major seven, second finger at the second fret of the first string, C seventh, your first finger 
at the first fret of the first string. And then the A minor chord. Ah, there we go. Second finger at the second fret of the fourth string. Now keep that. Keep that finger right there. Don't move it. Okay, keep it pressing down. Now take your first finger and press down at the first fret of the second string. So you're pressing down in two places. Second finger is at the second fret of the fourth string. And your first finger is at the first fret of the second string. And this chord now is called the F chord. Nice chord. Notice that with my other two fingers, I'm not kind of keeping them locked away or clenched, all right? What I'm trying to do with any fingers that are not pressing down on the strings, I just want to keep them relaxed and out over the rest of the rest of the strings, being being ready for what might come next, where they might need to be used, right? So try to keep your fingers out and available and, and over the strings, but not touching them, okay? If you're not pressing down, the other fingers should not touch. Um, and they should just be ready. Okay? Okay. So our chords again, C, C major 7th, C 7th, A minor, 2nd finger at the 2nd fret of the 4th string, F, we add our 1st finger at the 1st fret of the 2nd string. There we go. Now, the first really hard chord of the day. Is going to be the G seventh chord, G seventh chord. So G seventh. So keep making your F chord. Now keep that first finger pressed down. Take your second finger and move it up one string, one string to the second fret of the third string, and then take your third finger and press down at the second fret of the first string. It should look like that, and it should sound like this. That's what it should sound like. All right, there you go. Let's look at it again. So, first finger at the first fret of the second string, okay? And then second finger at the second fret of the third string, okay? And then third finger at the second fret of the first string, all right? If you find that it's really hard for you to get your fingers in there, then Try, you can consider, think about just maybe move your wrist over, move your wrist and hand a little bit towards the head of the ukulele. You might find you get more space to drop your finger down there. Okay? All right. And now we play the G seventh chord. All right. So I'm going to put my uke down for a second and let's take a look at the chord chart that we used to make that, right? So all of you should have a chord chart in your books, but let's look at. Here's G7 right here. There's the chord chart for G7. And what we've got with the G7 chord is there's the first finger pressing down at the first fret of the second string. Here's the second finger pressing down at the second fret of the third string. And then your third finger. I got to pick up my uke again just to make sure. Yeah, yeah, there it is. My third finger is pressing down at the second fret of the first string, okay? And then there's this little circle. What does that mean? That circle means that's an, actually an O for open. And that means that the string that the O is over means that that's just played open. So you, want, you don't press down on that string at all, but you play it open, okay? So when you make the G seventh chord, you are playing, you're pressing down on three places. You're pressing down three fingers, but you play all four strings. Same with C. With the C chord, you press down one place, but you play all four chords. The A minor chord, press down with one finger, but you play all the strings, all four strings, okay? And the F chord, you're pressing on two strings and leaving two open, press all four strings, okay? There we go. All right. So now, so the chords we've learned, C, C major 7, C 7th, A minor, F, and G 7th. And the cool thing about the C, F, and G 7th chords is that about two-thirds of all music written for the ukulele has been written using those three chords. Once you learn those three chords, 
and you can move and once you can you're confident enough with the muscle memory to be able to move between those chords without looking at your hand or with your eyes closed can you move from c to g7 to f back to c with your eyes closed all right um or sort of so it becomes like you've got the muscle memory you you know how to make that shape all right you, those three chords suddenly give you open up like two thirds of all the music ever written for the ukulele, all right? The ukulele is a is an instrument that sings in the key of C, and the, those three chords C, F, and G seventh are the primary chords for the key of C. And so, you'll see if you go online looking for sheet music that most most arrangements of songs for the ukulele will be written in the key of C, and we'll use those. They will add other chords, A minor. You might, there's, we'll learn, we're going to learn lots of chords during our time together, but uh, but that will that should work really well for you, right? Um, okay, so there's the, there's your first chords, and I think maybe we should play a song. And this is going to be a super simple song. This is going to be a really song. So should we, should we do such a simple song? Okay. London Bridge is falling down. Fall, falling down, falling down. London Bridge is falling down, my fair lady. Well, there's a good, there's a good way to practice the C and the G seventh chords. All right, all right. And so we're gonna do it. So C, and with our right hand, we're just gonna do, we're just gonna do a, a, a thumb strum, just down strum. We'll do more of this later. So London Bridge is falling down. And then G7, falling down. And then back to C, falling down. London Bridge is falling down, my fair lady. All right. And so all we did is C and G7. This is a good way to practice moving between C and G7. And once you've got that, this is like the, the easiest chord to one of the more difficult chords. And once you can do this and add in an F chord, then you're really on your way to learning lots of lots of really great songs. Okay, so there's a, there's an hour there's an hour of ukulele music for you to get you started, and I look forward to meeting everybody at our next per, next event. And hopefully the temperatures. Hopefully you guys are all like staying safe and comfortable during the heat wave, during the um, yeah. So um, look forward to seeing everybody again. Dave Poland and thanks again to Latino Civic Alliance for for being the host of this uh, this event. All right. Take care. Bye for now.